going to be compression testing 93 Volvo 940 turbo. Um, things you'll need, you don't have to, but I have a jump box or a battery charger because you're going to be cranking over the engine, you don't want to kill your battery. My battery already kind of sucks, so I need that. I um, need a compression tester, something like this. I got this uh, online for like 10 bucks, like Amazon or eBay or something. This one goes to 300 PSI, which is nice if you're going to do diesels, every compression tested diesel, it's a lot higher compression. Um, you're going to need a spark plug, socket, puller, or something to pull your spark plugs. Mine's three quarter of an inch. So I've got that. We've got a little extension, you got my ratchet. And then I actually had a, a plow truck hit the corner of my car here and put a nice little indent for my jump box to sit. So you don't have to do that, but I went ahead and did that just so I'm, you know, well prepared. So first thing is pulling your fuel pump fuse. Um, on this Volvo, mine is inside next to kind of just below the driver wheel. Yours is probably in there. I guess it could be in the engine bay. Um, this is just a four cylinder, straight four. Um, longitudinally mounted because it's rear wheel drive. 2.3 liter. Um, it's got a turbo from a Dodge Cummins pickup. Making about 28 PSI. Speaking of turbo diesels, um, so yeah, this thing was pretty quick and a lot of fun. And I was out drifting in the snow, as you do with a rear-wheel drive car, and popping off the limiter. And yeah, I don't know. I think I just blew it up. Did something because it shot my dipstick out. Oil was shooting out of there. Shot a kind of my air filter off of my catch can off shooting oil out of there. She's got tons of blow by now. So I'm gonna do a compression test. I think it's gonna be bad. Real bad. So we're inside the Volvo. It is an auto, yes. Um, I don't know who drifts automatics. I don't because I blew it up. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. My fuses are under here. Little ashtray comes out up on the bottom thing slides out i doubt hardly any of you are going to be doing this on the same volvo <laughs> but anyways there are my fuses so i'm going to find my fuel pump and i'm gonna look on here let's see uh heated intake fuel pump there it is first one it's number 11. all right let's see that is right up there Bubbles are super annoying that they have them like this. Let's see. I actually got a little fuse puller here. Maybe I'll use that. Yeah, it's on a little tether. Don't you American owners wish you had this in your vehicle? Yeah. Let me see a Ford or Chevy that has this. Just kidding. I own mostly American, I guess, at this point. Okay. Oh, that was sick. Look how easy that came out. There it is. Fuel pump fuse. Done. So I'm going to leave it right right there. Yep. Just hanging. And I had to put a block down because my e-brake doesn't work. Because I had to put it out of park. Only, well, I guess, I don't know. Hand, hand brakes and automatics to me is awesome instead of a foot brake. Not just for drifting, but just because it's awesome. But if it doesn't work, it's not good for anything. All right, so now we're pulling spark plugs. So, like I said, inline four, straight four, all four right here. Yours might be in the front, transversely mounted engine, probably the most common. Um, mine are like this though. So, pull the plug wire off or coil pack, whatever you're working with. Man, there's just oil everywhere in this thing. Awesome. Put my gloves on. Only thing I can afford from Snap-on. Actually, these were a gift. So I can't even afford these. All right. That uh, might be the wrong side extension. Oh, never mind. So I'm taking off. Doesn't matter what order you do. Um. It really doesn't matter at all. It's nice to have spark plug sockets because they have a 
little rubber thing in there that kind of grabs the plug when you pull it out. But mine are all melted, I think, so it doesn't do that. No, that one should be good. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's actually not terrible for what tune it is. It's actually good. Wow. Really impressive. Okay, so now that that's out, now take compression tester. Here it is. Very simple. This is pretty much exact, well it should be exact same thread as this. They have different adapters, but um, so it's threaded the same. You thread this in where your spark plug was. And depending on what type of compression tester you have, it'd be nice and ideal if you could see your gauge from inside the car, which I've never been able to do that, but maybe I'll try it this time. Get it nice and tight. Okay, yep. Isn't that a neat way I can see that from in there? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so now that that's in, compression testers in the first spark plug. All the other ones have spark plugs in them. Everything's the same. Just took off the lead on one of the cylinders, pulled the fuel pump fuse, and now all we do is actually crank the engine. Um, I used to only crank it like five times, but you want to make sure you're cranking it so you're getting full compression. It's going through a full cycle. Um, so at least five times, I'd say. I don't know. It probably depends. Maybe I'll do it more. Let me see if I can see that from up there. Okay. Okay, now we're in the car. Fuel pump fuse is still pulled. Um, compression tester is on. Cylinder number one. As you guys saw, key in. This is why you want a jump box. So I'm going to crank it. I don't know, I'm going to crank it a lot. Let's see. So ignition. Engages. Woo! Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's doing a lot of different stuff. <laughs> And that's good. So just trying to fire there because there's still some fuel in the lines, but it didn't. Okay, let's see. Come out here. Change exposure. Change focus. Ooh, that's pretty low. Well, it's, it's not just about how low or how high though, it's about consistency across all the cylinders. So, that one looks like... 100. 100. So, at 100 PSI... Uh, let's see, you want to take a picture. Unless you're old school and want to... Write it down with a fountain pen. Cylinder number two. So, my first cylinder was at 100 PSI. Which seems a little low, but that might be fine. This has a releaser on it. A little bit of pressure left. So, take your compression tester out. That first cylinder. This is the most thorough test. Most thorough video on how to do a compression test. Try to make it very simple. Uh, put the spark plug back in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you probably don't want to do this. Okay, well here's something. Um, if you do it hot, you need to do them all while they're hot. You can't do like half when it's hot and half when it's cold, I found out. So, it may make sense. But my engine's totally cold, so which is a nice time to do it because that's my exhaust manifold right there and that'd be hot. I'm going to put this plug back in. Or am I? There we go. Uh, you could check that with a torque wrench, or 
we could not. All right. So, in case you're like me and you want to make sure you don't mess up your firing order, even though it's very simple, I plug plug it back in. So I plug in number one. I unplug number two. And I'm gonna take out number two. It's actually not number two. It's like one, four, three, two, or something. I can't remember. That's why I put my plug wires back on. Take out spark plug number two. Okay. Let's see what this one looks like also. So if your spark plug's brownish at the tip, that's I think that's optimal. Black means you're rich, white means you're lean. So that's not bad. Okay, I'll put that one there. Now, compression tester into number two. I want to make sure this is tight. I wonder if that last one wasn't tight enough. I'm just twisting this hose. I didn't hear it leaking out from the spark plug or whatever, so I think it was good, but this one seems to be going a lot more. Oh man, I wonder if that first one wasn't tight. No, I think it was good. Make sure that's zero, your compression tester. Have a little relief valve right here. Set that there, and let's go crank it. Okay. Fuel bump view is still out. Let's see here, okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. I don't know. Ten good? Probably. Okay, let's see what this thing says. Uh, yeah, it's one, ten. That's already higher. That one's 110. That one came out here. Uh, okay. And that's actually holding. Yeah, that first one, I think. <laughs> I think uh, piston rings or something, because it's not, it didn't hold. It was like losing pressure. Maybe I'll try it again. All right, there's 110 on cylinder two. Now we'll go to cylinder three. And it's not dropping. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think this first one's bad. Cause it was just falling. Okay. Let the pressure out. Um thread. Don't break your glass. Okay, put your plug back in. Make sure your threads are clean. Can't beat a Volvo. Okay, that's going. Ideally, if, if you have pretty easy access to your spark plugs, you know what you're doing. This should take, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. It also helps if you have a partner looking at your gauge, because when you're cranking it, they can tell you once it stops climbing. Extension. Well, no, let me do this one. Okay. Tighten up. 
plug back down. Yep, that's tight. Okay. Put that lead, that plug lead back on. Okay. Taking off two. That plug wire. Pulling that plug out. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Okay. The drifting we were doing was on closed courses, of course. And it was in like quite a bit of snow, which is fun. This thing's got a Eaton locker on the rear that locks the diff up. G80, G80 I think, G80 Eaton, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's right, G80 Eaton Locker. Ah, oh, grabbed it this time. Ho oh, oh. looks a little rich. Honestly, it's not bad. I street tune this with micro squirt and add some initial tuning help, but then just went for it. So the fact that it didn't blow up right away on me, I'm pretty stoked about I guess I don't know why it blew up though I think I didn't really tune like up around the just popping off the li limiter I'm wondering if it was I don't know where the engine just couldn't hold it it's got 230,000 miles on it <laughs> well maybe it just didn't like all the all the revs okay let me get this one tight yeah that's tight okay all right, then we're gonna go crank it over. So all the spark plugs are on. Number three has a compression tester. All right, cranking over cylinder number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's see what we got. Volvo. Oh, it's getting better each time. <laughs> okay, so that looks like 115. So first one was 100, second one was 110, and this one is 115. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not good, like I imagined. Normal. Now, take this off of number three. that line from Austin Powers? You had me at number two. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Release that pressure. Okay. Well, plug, plug wire back on three. Now I'm going to the, oh, I need to put the plug back in. Okay, yeah. Plug in. Austin Powers got me all messed up. Plug three, going in. Hand tight. Make sure you don't cross thread. That is a bad, bad idea. So my idea is maybe to take all these fast parts and put them on another wagon because my transmission's slipping on here anyways also. So dead engine, slipping transmission. And I'd like to say that body damage the plow truck did. I don't know, it's hard to, it's kind of torn. It's kind of nice, it's more ghetto, but maybe it would have been nicer if that was good, so. Let me transplant over to another 940 or 740 post-1990. Make sure I get those Piston oil squirters, potentially a locking rear diff. The this one's got an e-fan, electronic fan, which is nice. Gives me more room. Tight. This car was pretty funny though. You can watch videos of me pulling on STIs and modified STIs. All right, doing the last one now. Okay, pull that off. 
cylinder number four. Pull the plug wire off. Pull the plug out. That plug, <laughs> oh, that plug is just doused in oil. That could be from leaking valve cover gasket leaking into it, but mm, I don't know. Most likely, that's not. Okay, this one's gonna be tricky. It actually, these plugs are so nice and easy to get out. The excess on one of these Volvo's rear wheel drive turbo bricks. Amazing. Love these cars. Easy to work on. I have a Saab transversely mounted. <clears throat> 95, 900. Man, these things are so tight. Ugh. Okay, get that real tight. Now. So crank it. Okay, well, that doesn't want to change the exposure. Okay, number four, and here we go. Crank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's see. Volvo. bad three looked all right and <laughs> unless I screwed this into some other hole <laughs> no it's, it's definitely in the yeah it's zero compression <laughs> on number one can't beat a Volvo let me uh, do it again just for fun <laughs> wow I wasn't expecting that result I thought maybe I thought maybe number one was the bad one they're all bad. <laughs> Only number three. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If it doesn't have compression after all that, that motor is dead. It actually still kind of pulls though. It needs boost, but. <laughs> That's funny. I wasn't expecting that. Shocking. I've always done compression tests and they've been, you know, within 5 or 10 PSI, which is what you want. If it's within 5 or 10 PSI of each cylinder, 10 is kind of pushing it, but you're fine on an old, old engine. On a new engine, I think you want it definitely within 5. Okay. I'm going to pull the... <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's why there's so much oil on this plug also. All the oil leaked past, leaked past the rings, I believe that's what that means. Past the piston rings. Pull this thing out. Thing still runs though. Anyone want to buy it? $5,000. One time, one day deal. Okay, I'm going to put that back on. Don't even, don't even know why I'm doing that because there's no there but whatever all right plug so there you have it make that look nice and pretty since this is such a good car don't forget to once you finish don't forget to put your fuse back in this guy put your fuel pump fuse back in and go have fun blow it up some more
Whoop, there we go. Sweet, that goes in there. Put your fuse puller back on its little holster, right where it goes, right, see that holster right there? Yeah, that's it, that's on. Mm -hmm. Whoop. Next tray goes back in. Thing's ready to go. See if it fires. Oh, it's in gear. It's an auto. Oh yeah. You guys wanna hear it? Cold start. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. A little smoky up here. Don't call Smokey the Bear. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. There it is. Something like a choo choo train. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Catch can, no filter. Red block. Woo! Oh, let me show you this little trick. So, Volvo hoods. It's funny, people don't know this, I don't think. So, it's, you can see the vertical on Volvo hoods. Even if they're dented, like mine, you open it. Well, I'll just show you. So, normally, once you close it, these things go up, and then when you open it, it stops right there. See that stopper? Yep, that's where it naturally stops. So, I don't know where I read this, I think in the manual. <laughs> Before it's all the way open, push that lever down. It's actually meant for this. Push it down on both sides. And then your hood can go vertical. That is super nice, actually. Tons of room, gets light. Yeah, that's pretty rad.